Uh, let me take off from where Ambassador Padsati uh, left off, which is global aspirations of a civilizational state. Now, I think if you need, if you have aspirations, uh, first of all, you need to project a strong national identity. You can't be an appendage uh, in international relations. So, who we are, what we can do, what we can be. I think these are today perhaps questions that we need to uh, answer before the rest of the world uh, in sharper terms than we have done before. If a country like ours has aspirations, uh, I think it's a very natural thing. Uh, it's important that we tell ourselves that we can't play second fiddle, we can't play second fiddle in the world and we certainly can't play second fiddle in Asia. I want you to think just six years from now, six years, not that far away, we will be the most populous country in the world. Now that distinction from 1947 has belonged to China. And China has used that extremely powerfully uh, to advance its claims in international relations. It could have been us if there wasn't a partition, but the point I'm making is that uh, while we naturally think in terms of a growing economy, uh, growing influence, but there are factors which we need to uh, use which uh, work in terms of uh, influencing global narratives. My third point, this is an increasingly nationalistic world. I think Donald Trump signifies that in the US, President Xi does that in China. Uh, the Brexit itself is part of the nationalism phenomenon. And you can see this across continents. You know, it's, it's uh, nationalist leaders tend to get re-elected in this uh, environment. You saw that with Abe, you're seeing it with Putin, Erdogan, Netanyahu, and even in places like Brazil, which uh, for a long time hasn't had nationalistic leaders. Uh, the rise of somebody like uh, Mr. Bolsonaro is a very powerful phenomenon. Now, why do I mention that? I mention that because in a nationalistic world, uh, unless there is a strong nationalist leadership, you're not going to be able to play that game very effectively. So, uh, I, I think the, if you look in terms of global narratives and uh, global demands, in many ways, the, the sort of realism that is required to do international relations today and to achieve aspirations, I think that comes from a nationalist leadership, which incidentally also is a, is a leadership which is naturally attuned to projecting uh, cultural attributes and identity much sharper. Now to achieve aspirations, I think it's important to make choices. Uh, we cannot duck the difficult debates of the world or even the difficult debates of our region. We will have situations uh, where sometimes we will have to make choices, difficult choices, uh, sometimes between countries uh, with whom we have good relations. But again, part of making those competing choices is going up the international ladder. Uh, apart from making choices, I think the other part of realizing aspirations is to influence outcomes and uh, I would really echo Ambassador Patsati that perhaps one outcome that I can think which we influenced very effectively was the Paris uh, climate change uh, outcome where in many ways I think we sort of, we were the people who were a bridge between the developed world and the developing world. Uh, it's not just influencing outcomes, I would actually go a step back and say perhaps even in terms of shaping the agenda. Uh, uh, today, uh, if, you, if you aspire to higher things, uh, the ability to shape agenda is part of that uh, and uh, we can see uh, some of that already manifesting itself in uh, G20 summits, for example, issues like, I, I think definitely terrorism has got a much sharper international focus because of us. Uh, I would say an uh, issue like black money uh, today uh, has come on the international agenda largely uh, due to our efforts at the G20. 
Now, having spoken of aspirations, it's not enough to aspire. I think it's important to realize. And to realize uh, one's goals, it's, it's critical that we read the world right. Uh, today, it's a, it's a much more nationalistic world. It's a world where traditional concepts are no longer an effective guide for policy making. We have seen in many ways the Western world, which was extremely united from 1945, uh, today uh, show uh, cracks, to say the very least. Uh, so how to, uh, how to understand this changing world and how to leverage that uh, to advantage, I think is an important part of realizing aspirations. The second big uh, challenge for us is to secure the neighborhood. Uh, you know, uh, when it comes to neighborhood, uh, sometimes in India the debate tends to be if anything happens which is perceived as uh, not uh, beneficial to our interest. Uh, we don't really look at what's happening in that country. We get into a debate of why did we lose that country. Now, the reality is uh, all our neighbors have their politics. Their politics are cyclical like ours. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, regimes get elected, re-elected, sometimes they don't. Uh, what is important for us is really to build structural linkages so that whatever happens in these countries, our interests are secured. So they should be somewhat autonomous of, of uh, the regime uh, in our neighborhood. And that requires huge investments uh, in, in our neighborhood. I, I think that effort is well underway. Today, building connectivity in our neighborhood, uh, and by neighborhood, I mean an extended neighborhood. I see it from the Gulf to Southeast Asia. Uh, I think that's important. And the other region is, is the Indian Ocean. Again, Ambassador Patsati flagged our attention because we are going to see big changes in the Indian Ocean. We are going to see navies which have historically not operated in the Indian Ocean be there. Uh, I think there will be uh, some contestation here. So how do we, we have historically been a little complacent about the Indian Ocean. Uh, I think uh, it's clearly a uh, uh, domain to which we need to devote greater attention. Uh, again, part of uh, the aspiration agenda would be, it's one thing to make claims. I, I think the world believes you if you are able to uh, to prove that and, and to show that uh, in many ways you can live up uh, to, to your aspirations. And uh, if, if there is a vacuum in a way uh, as a result of a more nationalistic world, I think it's in situations where there are uh, humanitarian situations or disaster responses. And what we have done in, by going into Nepal during the earthquake, uh, to Yemen during the civil war, to Sri Lanka during uh, rains and mudslides, even in Maldives when there was a drinking water crisis. I think that ability to be a uh, first responder in a crisis, I think that is a very uh, important change uh, in our own sense of responsibility towards the world. Uh, about 15 years ago, some of you would recall, we had a big tsunami in the Indian Ocean. Uh, at that time, in our region, uh, while we managed, uh, a lot of countries actually needed US or Japan or European Union to come to their help. I think that era is behind us. It's behind us for two reasons. These countries, I think, today won't be present in the Indian Ocean in the manner they used to be. And secondly, I think a lot of countries will today look up to India instead. Uh, so stepping up to the plate, taking on greater responsibilities, that too is part of aspirations. And uh, finally, uh, I will end with this remark. If you look at the world, uh, uh, we, we are really seeing, uh, I think, uh, uh, a gentleman here asked a question, who do you trust? Uh, who will stand by you? I think we are seeing a situation where, frankly, everybody is playing everybody. Uh, and those who understand the game, those who can uh, work these contradictions to their advantage, uh, I think are best placed to go ahead. Uh, I would suggest to you that we are in a good position because by and large, our relations with most of the major powers, major players are reasonably good. 
And if you look at Indian diplomacy this year, uh, you can see an attempt really to engage everybody. It's a sort of sabka saath, sabka vikas in international relations. So you have, uh, you know, Prime Minister engage President Xi in Wuhan, go to Sochi to engage President Putin, hold the 2 plus 2 meeting with the United States uh, for the first time in India, uh, and today he's in Japan uh, meeting Prime Minister Abe. So uh, again, it is a changing world, it is a loser world. Uh, I think those countries who play the game most effectively are in the best position to realize their global aspirations. Thank you very much for your attention.